Are you tired of the same old waveforms? Is pulse width modulation just too boring? We'll be bored no longer with the AI12 Wave Animator by AI Synthesis. You can get this module pre-built or flex your soldering muscles with a DIY kit. So the Wave Animator is an 8HP harmonic pulse generator with loads of modulation capabilities. If you have the AI11 analog VCO, you could actually attach a jumper in the back, which connects to the input on the wave animator from behind for the saw wave. Otherwise, you could just plug your oscillator into the input. Okay, now I have this plugged in. I have a saw wave going into the input, and the output is going into the oscilloscope. The top here is the wave animator, and the bottom is the original waveform. So this is the wave animator, and that's the original waveform of the saw wave. So we see it turns our saw wave into a pulse wave, but we actually get an additional pulse that we can control the amplitude to in positive and negative directions. We can control the distance of that second pulse. And we can control the width of both pulses. Note that the width does go to zero at fully counterclockwise. Then we also have CV control over all these parameters with the three CV inputs here with their own attenuator to attenuate the CV. But before we look at the CV modulation and all the cool stuff we could get with that, Let's look at the wave animator with different waveforms. Now I have my input in a morph input so I can change my wave easily. And we see how it changes our wave animator. Now the most interesting one, and probably least useful, is sending a pulse into the wave animator as it basically just inverts our signal. And we don't have control over the width other than zeroing it out. So if you want to like, you know, make something really choppy, you could do something with that. But since they're inverted, we'll see that they actually phase each other out. When I get to a certain volume. So they are pretty direct flips of each other. But it gets interesting when we go to the triangle wave. As we can see how... There's actually two additional pulses in between each pulse instead of one because it is basically just mirroring our waveform as we see it's going up and then down. It's staying in the positive, but we could go into the negative. And it's basically mirroring our waveform in pulse form so we could get that extra harmonic pulse in there and then morphing between these two waveforms, you get an interesting pulse width sort of effect. Which brings us to CV modulation, which I'm gonna just keep back at the saw wave here. And let's get some CV going into all three inputs. Let's get our pulse width going. Notice it is zeroing out still, so we have to attenuate this one to get it into a better range. Now let's modulate the distance. And now let's modulate the amplitude. And we see the amplitude is really just oscillating 
the base of our pulse, which is pretty cool. So if we go fast enough, we can kind of mix in another oscillator with this amplitude input. Now an interesting thing when I go down a few octaves here is I can plug an oscillator. Let's unplug the input here. And I'm gonna just plug an oscillator into the amplitude here. And we're getting sine wave. So we plug our waveform back in and we're getting a nice bass undertone even though this input is an octave higher than our main input, it's adding a nice bass to the amplitude. So that's just a cool little effect to thicken or you know add some more curves into your waveform. And let's go back to the LFO for the amplitude. And this is modulating them all at audio rate. Oh, let's plug all three of these into a second oscillator here. And then our main is on a first oscillator, so all of it is pitched an octave up. Let's see if we go two octaves up. Or the same pitch. A nice cool unison sound here. But since this sends pulse waves out, we can use it not only for audio signal, but we can use it for CV triggers or gates. So you'll see if I just run a clock into Wave Animator, it's not going to work because the wave animator needs some sort of moving wave like a sine triangle saw to detect the speed of the waveform, along with it needing negative voltage to detect the waveform. So a regular clock doesn't work, and also even a saw wave is not working. So what we need to do is actually offset this envelope going in. So I'm gonna send negative five volts into the input of this, and we see we're getting some snare hit triggers. Now it detects the speed by the angle of our ramp here. So if I adjust the ramp here, we're gonna get different range for our distance. Now for triggers, you want your width as thin as possible so we could really control our distance. And the amplitude needs to be in the positive for triggering. But this is a way to get some nice flam into some of your trigger hits. And we can control when we have the flam with our amplitude here. And it's a nice little way if you want to add some swing into one of your clocks. The 
And now let's try some other audio signals into the wave animator and see how that sounds. So with the modal in rings, we're getting this really distorted sound and it really gets choppy when you start playing with the damping. You obviously get more harmonics with the brightness and then mess around with the position to get a little bit different timbre. Now strings starts to sound really cool. And here's car plus. So if you want a real crunchy sort of degrading sound, Rings is great. And I actually got a really awesome timbre through Rings and the Wave Animator. There we go. Settings like this, that gives you a nice distortion. And I would suggest trying some actual guitar through the Wave Animator to get some really cool effects. Now there's one other thing I want to check out with the Wave Animator here, and that's running vocals through it which will be in this song coming up in which I use the regular oscillator through it for the main riff. And then there are some little lead bucky sounds coming from rings going through wave animator. And then we'll have the vocals going through wave animator. Enjoy. Thank you. 